Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. And today I have for you a two versus two on point. The Hawk is indeed part of a recent tournament of game replays. These chaps decided to send in this interesting game, and well, I'll be casting it, so isn't that lovely? Yes, indeed, Point Duel Hawk sort of featuring that map, although it probably didn't quite feature the forces we're seeing. At least it was sort of the area of fighting where some rangers stormed some German artillery positions and were, were partially bogged down for a bit of a while, but they managed to clear it out. And well, who shall be finding? Well, we will be seeing some Germans. We will be seeing, in fact, be seeing Muspelheim, er, uh, and Helheim, er, uh, finding for the Wehrmacht. Fighting for the 91st Luftlande Division, yes indeed, they were probably one of the ones actually fighting in the area. Fighting for the Fatherland and opposing them shall be Rom Jim and Go um, AI Rainbow 607. Well, that's certainly easy to remember. But nonetheless, fighting for the Americans. Fighting for the 4th Infantry Division. Might we be accidenting some Rangers? Who knows? But let us get right down to the fighting, shall we? Let us see how this will work out. Wehrmacht quarters going up for the Americans, for the... No, for the Wehrmacht. Bloody hell, I'm already messing up right from the beginning. That's absolutely a marvelous barracks from there, and... Barracks from there, so dual barracks versus dual Wehrmacht quarters. Pioneers hard at work, in fact, getting it up as swiftly as possible, at least for Mr. Helheim. Whereas Muspelheim is taking it more casually and also securing territory with his Pioneer. Engineers heading westwards. Barracks is up, focused down rather swiftly in both cases, in fact. And well, so far, nothing unusual, nothing that really stands out. Forces of the 91st Luftlande Division sort of easily crawling out. Uh, well, in case I might as well make a small recommendation while we're waiting for something to really brew up. And we're asking for the seat, of course, when the tournament they were sort of seated, and these chaps were actually seated pretty high. Three. Anyhow, if you're into this sort of World War strategy games, and for example also turn-based games, well, I might be able to recommend a game just recently released called Unity of Command. Quite fun, and only $30, so... If you're looking into that thing, it's sort of a set in the early, East, early Eastern Front around Stalingrad at that time. Quite fun, and the AI is absolutely vicious. So I can certainly recommend it. If you're curious, that is. Anyhow, we are seeing a Jeep now out actually from Rom Jim. He's actually going for perhaps some early disruption. In fact, though it gets caught out in the open by the false guy, is opened up with the Car 98K rifles. The Car 98K, a weapon from the time of World War One. In fact, previously even earlier, although with some small modifications. Rifleman are rhyming in the north against some other false grenadiers. So Rainbow Six will be using more riflemen. Whereas currently Rom Jim will be going more for some disruption with his jeep. Although he's constantly running into false grenadiers, and so isn't really to able to disrupt what he actually wants to disrupt. That is the pioneers. He wants to basically ensure that the Wehrmacht can't really get the points they want. Engineers in the south. Quite a few riflemen arriving from the barracks of Rom Jim. And James Jeeps open up on the Pioneers, False Gunners firing away, Rifleman sort of pulling away, not quite keen on phasing off against the False Gunners right there. MG42 moving in to set up in support. And the Jeep might be able to catch it, no, the Jeep is forced to pull away, and the MG42 gets up into the wrecked barn. Pioneers in the south getting I mean, caught up with the Engineers, and False Gunners in the south now getting charged by the Jeep. One rifleman moved closer, these false grenades need to get into heavy cover and they need to get into a position where the jeep can't so easily know. Instead they are forced to retreat. MG42 with further false grenade support moving in to perhaps do something. Or no. In and all a bit of work there, but mostly it seems to be that Helheim is supporting Muspelheim in the center. Sort of casually ignoring the north. Can be a bit dangerous in particular if they get too close to your own base right there. Well, it was a good idea to stick together. Force Clans and MG42 continuing the South Jeep and Engineers. Creating a bit of a nucleus right down there. And MG42 with Force Clans. Will the MG42 be able to set up in time? Will the Force Clans be able to cover them? Rifleman up. MG42 not able to set up in time. In fact, it has to pack up again. And the Rifleman just flanking about the vicious little bastards. MG42 tries again, but again, the Rifleman just seemed to be flanking. And in fact, oh, wait, no, there, in fact. 
just within the range, but the MD-42 is still taking quite a bit of punishment. Oh dear, and the one man just barely survives. The Volkskrein is doing a bit of damage right there. And the Jeep goes up in flames, right and firing down. The Volkskrein is caught out in the open. Good use of the building right there, able to tie up the Volkskrein is here. And down here in the south as well, while these provide firing cover, although they could move behind the Jeep here for a bit of heavy cover. Volkskrein is though using the light cover to set up some heavier cover. Because again, remember, when you're building sandbags or anything right out in the open, your troops become easier targets, and of course you can mitigate that a bit by using light cover to sort of create heavy cover. So good move there. So enables to protect against the rifle in the ban, although why these rifle are then pulling away and not moving in to sort of perhaps, you know, flank here from the Jeep is a good question. Which is sadly not being answered. Rifleman facing off against false gunners in the south. The false gunners are not doing too well. The MG42 has retreated. It's back at base getting reinforced. Sniper on the way, Sharp Schutze. And Rifleman continuing pressing towards south. The false gunners there are taking quite a beating. The south might be lost. In fact, currently the only victory point though is the southern one. Every other victory point has been secured by the Americans of the 4th Infantry Division, while the 91st Luftlande keeps pushing onwards for the Fatherland, for glory, and possibly an Iron Cross. Sniper is ready. In the meanwhile, another sniper, in fact, also from Helheim. It seems to be a rather mirrored effort, except Mr. Helheim is not going with a single MG. He's, in fact, going with lots of false kind of this. This is actually quite interesting. And BARs have been equipped for Rainbow Six, whereas Jim seems to be not caring about that. He's probably going to be going for something heavy. Yes, indeed. Supply yard, he will be going for the vehicles, while Rainbow Six will be providing the vehicles. Engineers getting sniped, false kindness, and the trench need to get out of there. They need to retreat, get reinforced. False kindness also pulling back, being pushed by rifles in the south, pulling back towards the barn. A bunker going up for Muspelheim. And let us go have a look at Helheim and see what he's up to. With his three Volkskrenier teams, although two are forced back, one on the field alongside that sniper. He has alongside that other sniper. He has indeed quite a few snipers. Actually, right from getting stopped by an MG42 in the barn. And for the far line has gone up. Muspelheim has gone defensive. Deciding to hold the line, in which case we hope that Mr. Hellheim will be going for something a bit more offensive, either Terror or Blitzkrieg. If they both go defensive, things might go a bit wrong. Rifle in the north securing what they can, in fact, completely unopposed, although a quick counterattack might be going in from the false gunners as soon as they're reinforced with a bit of support from those pioneers with the flamethrower and that sniper. Further fighting here in the center, false gunners holding the line, sniper still firing away, shooting the brains out of any Yankees he sees popping out of the trenches. Forward barracks up here in this tiny chapel, actually. Quite interesting move allows the Americans to keep up fighting in a longer period. Of course, if they lose this area and they're forced to completely retreat, though, that manpower will be lost. Rifleman getting sniped, but now the sniper is in trouble. He, a lot of automatic fire being directed against him. And the MG42 occupied with the troops in the north, not against the rifleman right in front of it. Oh dear, medic bunker up for Muspelheim. A short phase for Mr. Helheim. He's not going for the Creek Barracks, he's going for the Sturm Army, I imagine, and perhaps some heavy armored cars. Will we be seeing any medic stations for the Americans? Yes, indeed. Rum Mr. Jim is going for it. And grenades, yes, indeed. We're seeing a very heavy infantry approach from Rainbow Six. This is absolutely good to see. And we, I do believe we are seeing some armored cars out there by Jim. Indeed, that's going to be quite nasty. Good use still of that sandbox. That's really helped here. Grenadiers now ready from the medic bunker. And we are seeing forces of Helheim pushing through in the north as well. A bit of fighting there. The Americans are still holding most of the map, most of the victory points. In fact, but now the Germans are making an attempt to take it back. American counterattack immediately being initiated. Medics pulling in the wounded as soon as possible. And there we go. M8 armored car. Greyhound moving in. Opening up on the German infantry. Although the trench just provide cover. We are being having a bit of quiet too, but there we go again. False gun down. 50 cal machine gun ready. Oh dear, things are going to look nasty for the false gun ears. Creek Bergs is up for Muspelheim though. And I imagine we will be seeing a pack 38. In the meanwhile, we are seeing an attempt by Helheim to no Muspelheim to approach in the south, but he's con constantly hitting mines laid down by Jim. Though he loses an engineer, he's still able to keep things a bit quiet yeah, down there. Counterattack in and off to ensure that the Germans cannot seize what they Want in the north, Sturm Army going up. And looks like Helheim has in fact lost a full scanner quite 
close on their team quite tragic and another one might be lost even as it's trying to equip a 50 and then p40 oh dear if they're lost now that's going to be 50 minutes out the window oh no Helham has been brutally crippled the m and the m8 will be able to do quite a bit of damage and there's nothing mr Helheim will be able to do about it Things are looking quite dire. He's forced to stop the storm armory, and his troops are getting absolutely massacred. While in the meanwhile, Muspelheim is trying to send in some forces to assist there. Pack 38, but then again, that's why you want to always have your own anti tank assets, otherwise, you might result see something like this happen. In fact, Helheim is getting absolutely crippled, massacred, broken, shattered. The Pack 38 sending up. The M8 has been hit by a Panzerfaust already. Veterans he won, but will he be able to get out in time? No! The M8 is gone, but Helheim has really been taken take to the cleaners. His forces are dead shattered and only has a sniper and some false grenades left with some pioneers now joining in. He really needs to get moving. In fact, he's dropping the storm army, realizing we need more drastic measures. He's going straight for the battle phase and the Panzer Command. Command. So no city business right there. Muspelheim's false grenades are being forced away. And we are seeing riflemen in the north pushing through here. The Americans are really establishing some solid dominance with the riflemen with the M8s. Although they do need to be a bit more careful about losing them like that. Medic station is of course up. And the forward barracks is still there. And we are seeing a weapon support center now going up for Rainbow Six. He's really going to keep the infantry approach while... Gem is going for a more mechanized one. Approach then riflemen engaging the grenadiers right here. Further grenadiers have been reformed. And MD falls in the medic bunker. M8 moving in. Pack 38 quickly moves, shifting towards the south to keep things occupied. They're right inside the barn, blasting away. Strong approach here, but will there be any artillery to really cement what they're doing here? That could really turn things against Muspelheim as well. In particular, since Helheim, after having taken that beating, will be out for some time. Let's go have a look at Jem. His ally is still here, occupied here. A few grenades here could do quite a bit of damage. Anti-tank gun on the way, in fact, for Mr. Jim. And there we go, grenade on the grenadiers. Oh, the irony, two grenadiers are down to a grenade. Medics trying to pull in the wounded. And grenadiers in the north will penetrate. Lots of pioneers and some other forces. Really a desperate scramble from Muspelheim to try and contain this American assault. And looks like the Americans are, in fact, being whittled down ever so slowly. The M8 doing its best, but it's simply not enough. And Jim's riflemen are forced away. German counterattack marching through the center. Even a mortar was there, but it was simply not enough. And the M8 is also getting away. Not quite keen on facing up against the Pack 38. Riflemen doing the best against all of these false grenadiers and grenadiers. Veterans are up. So, of course, a Kampfkraft center. Still no doctrine for Jim, though. And the medic station is getting shot up by Panzer Schrecks. And right for shots, M8 and engineers moving in to stop a these grenadiers, or at least kill some of them. And there we go, forced away. The Pantrick, they were still there. Small car blown up by the American anti tank gunners. Apparently, they don't know the difference between a car and a tank. Ah, terrible joke, I know. Sniper's finding a way. Apparently, a flesh sniper. No, it's Helheim sniper who's still alive. And the Germans are really turning things around now. Having beaten out early by the Americans, they are now. Slowly but surely getting the drop on things all again. Mr. Helheim will still be out, but Musbelheim is really doing his best he can. Sector Partly thanks to that medic bunker, and of course all the wounded from both sides. That is, both German forces of the 91st Luftlande. Engineers getting sniped, need to retreat. The M8 continues to shoot away at the Grenadiers. Gets hit by Panzer Schreck. But the Panzer Schreckers are forced away. And a fresh counterattack. M8 sent. No mortar setting up and an American sniper on the move as well. This could end up badly for the German one as well, who's probably not expecting that. And mortar runs flying, killing what looks like a medic. Or a grenadier, I'm not entirely sure. Could even be a false grenadier. And the false grenadier inside the trench are not looking too good. Forced away, mortar runs landing, forcing away the pack 38. And another assault by the Americans and the infantry team has been knocked Losing out from Jim, most sadly. And looks like the rifle right there got pounced upon by several false grenadiers with some grenadiers. 
and mine's being laid down here right in front of the Pioneer, so that's a bit of a bad move. In fact, they might get scorched. There we go. Although negative cover, while it makes you a lot of a much easier target for most things, in fact, against flame flows, it actually makes it harder for it to hit you. Good thing to know. Mortar fire on the medic bunker, a priority target, that's good to see. Although some armor would be nice to see as well. And there we go. Hellamai has arrived with some support from the 2nd Panzer Division. Which was one of the earliest Panzer Divisions to really arrive to support the German infantry at the front. In the American sector actually. Which is why I use it so much. In particular since this is point to Hawk. So there you go. But Panzer IV arriving. Blasting away at the American riflemen. There is nothing to stop it. Glory to the Fatherland, Panzer March, all that. And Achtung Panzer, you silly Yankees. Pressure from Muspelheim in the South Grenadiers, flanking in from all sides, really able to attack from every angle. The Americans are lacking in something to really break through this, but the Medic Bunker might soon be going down if the mortar can just be allowed to fire for a bit longer, plus the anti-tank gun. Things might be there, although why the anti-tank gun didn't turn against the Panzer IV is a bit of a good question. Panzer IV moving towards the north, M8 knocked out. Panzer Kampfwagenfeuer killing for the fatherland. And something further on the way. And right, Volkskan is simply getting sniped out in the open. Further snipers from Rainbow Six was really just sticking to the infantry and infantry combined arms. But still, interestingly enough, he's not actually going for the medic bunker. You'd think he'd do that considering he had the most infantry or a supply yard. That's a bit distressing. I mean, with that much infantry and Knights Cross soldiers, the 91st Luftlander sending in his best veterans, possibly veterans of Crete, who knows, or just some of their veteran NCOs. The Knights Cross soldiers is a bit of an anomalous unit. I mean, you could sort of imagine some units would actually have sort of served as something similar to, as the Germans at times did put together specific units out of their most veteran units or NCOs basically and I suppose the Knights Cross could do for that mortar team knocked out sniper killed by a German sniper engineers getting blown up the Panzer IV still quite a threat but now the anti-tank gun turns against it and an Ostwin flak Panzer moving in the second Panzer division now really moving in to support the 91st And let us go have a look at Rainbow Six. Whatever shall he be doing? Looks like a small force is moving in to save the southern part. Center is still in American hands. Fresh medic station up. Well, as fresh as those can be. Munitions getting pilfered from American armored cars. And a large force assembling. Several mortars is in fact up from Muspelheim. Quite novel. Norm, not normally you see that many mortars, but apparently Muspelheim is rather feeling heavily for the mortar approach. Suddenly doing some nasty things. Still no doctrinal choice from either side of the Americans. And we are 16 minutes, in fact 17 minutes into the game. That's not entirely good. Of course they could be a bit in doubt, but again with that much munitions you really ought to do something. And for example infantry with some artillery could have done something or a strafing round or something. Grenadiers getting hit by their own mortar rounds, not quite friendly fire. Victory points once more being secured by the Americans and the Wehrmacht is slowly ticking down. Having had a slightly successful surge, they are now once more being held in check by the American forces, although Mr. Helheim is turning things around as well after that disastrous battle in the beginning. Further Knights cross holders moving in. Volkswagen is also having a bit of fun. And what can be seen of the sun? Anti-tank gunners cleared out by snipers. And artillery getting called in. In which case we already know what Helheim has gone for. He has in fact gone for terror. And that is an in fire storm. Right, been caught out in the open trying to Enemy kill the sniper. Motor rounds flying. Chapel under quite a bit of fire source and medic station. American infantry mucking about in the north. Trier center going up. Still no supply yard for Mr. Rainbow Six. No anything else. In fact, now he's gone for armor. Peculiar. Fulcon is trying to render the chapel no longer American, but no such luck. 
And some rifle of Cork in a nasty situation, forced to make a retreat right through a gauntlet of German death. Not good at all. Two men left. And no more left. In fact, that was quite sad. But the Americans are still holding on. They are not giving up. Fresh rifle being trained. Mr. Rainbow Sex has, in fact, taken quite a beating and looks like both sides has gone for Amateur. Doctrine, and we're seeing a Calliope. Well, that might level things out a bit, but I can't help but feel that either might have wanted to go in for something else to sort of get a broader spectrum of abilities to choose from and help. But that is apparently not to be. Knights cross holders in the center, moving towards the rifle out in the open. Assault rifles against rifles and BAR, Browning automatic rifle. German Panzers moving about a bit as well, some getting repaired, others just having a nice holiday. Grenadiers were advancing on the rifle, sort of hiding in a trench partly. And the Calliope blasts away with a barrage of doom. Doing quite a bit of damage. Mortar team down. False Grenadier is heavily wounded. Flak Panzer met. Barely avoids most of it. And the Panzer for now advances. Confident that there's absolutely nothing to prevent to hit it. Of course, I have to say that's true. Medic station might soon actually be able to reform an infantry team. It looks like a fresh bunker is up. German Panzers dealing with the rifleman there. Territory. And looks like the German base right there is, of course, quite secure. But why are they, interestingly enough? And are we are seeing a Kampfkraft sent up, but we are not seeing any sort of veterancy for the Panzers as yet or the infantry. And a repair bunk race up for Helheim to repair his own tanks. And the Panzer IV coming under quite a bit of fire from several anti-tank guns now. Might want to be careful in particular if armor piercing rounds become the order of the day. And artillery getting called in here. Registered artillery from Muspelheim. Doing quite a bit of damage, forcing the Americans away. Wispelheim still holding on with some false grenadiers and riflemen. False grenadiers and grenadiers. A mortar. One was lost to the uh, Calliope and some MG 42s. Several snipers roaming the field by Rainbow Six. That's quite a bit of manpower being used on that, and still no supply as to really help with the upkeep, which could actually give him more manpower in the long run. I feel that's a bit of a. Terrible decision from him. Rather than hunting down the engineers. Grenadiers being found out in the open by the riflemen. And the snipers continue the hunt. One gets exposed. No, wait, no, that was just a grenadier. I thought that was a sniper. And a Calliope barrage once more right into the mess of middle of things. And the German sniper narrowly avoids everything, in fact. Engineers with flamethrowers advancing, Panzer IV getting hit. And Knight's Cross holders move in in a sweeping pattern, a wave of Knight's Cross death. Sneaking in, clearing out the anti-tank gun in seconds with their assault rifles. Things are looking a bit grim. Sniper's not doing much. Riflemen ready to move in, but they're not moving in. The anti-tank gun has been cleared out by the ever-valiant Knights Cross. In fact, Terran flew a rifleman team on the retreat. But now the riflemen are moving in to try and salvage the situation. Knights Cross out in the open. Quite a bit of automatic fire. Getting sniped by American snipers. And apparently they did not survive. Others are moving in. Right into the mess of things. Getting shot up, Panzer Force blasting at the rifleman, the rifleman keep on nonetheless after the Knight's Cross. And the Knight's Cross man to actually catch the snipers, forcing the snipers away, but the riflemen do not stop. They in fact slaughter the Knight's Cross for some reason. Helheim did not retreat his Knight's Cross holders. Oh dear. And the South keeps changing hands. The Americans, the Germans, the Americans, the Germans, but the center seems to be more constant. Though it has changed into the German's hands once more. And another Calliope. Rainbow Six has also gone for Calliope. No Pershings at all from either. 
that at least could have done something against all those Panzer Force and their Ostvens, but no such thing it would seem. Rifeman getting close to the chapel once more, but an ever vicious mortar round kills five, forcing them all away. Absolutely amazing. If you're the Germans, that is, if you're the Americans, you're probably less enthused. Yes, Dick. And Panzer Force continuing to do quite a bit of hammock. Ostvin also having a bit of fun. Mortar rounds keep flying in. Medic station is no more. Chapel could soon be taken away from the Americans. Grenadiers and riflemen facing off. BARs now for Jim's riflemen as well. My goodness. And German Panzers now in. Hellheim getting a bit of vengeance for that base assault. Although he's at the wrong base. Now moving in, knocking out the barracks. A mine was hit though by the Panzer IV. Veterans C2 up, giving light machine guns. And the Kalib is bombarding the center once more. Mortar team dead. But the German Panzers are not stopped right here. Rainbow 6 base is quite threatened. All three victory points now in the hands of the Germans. Rifleman facing off against Grenadiers. Grenadiers a bit up in the open west. The Rifleman are in a nicely armoured trench. This bunker has in fact not been upgraded. It's just a bunker. That's odd. And the German Panzers continue their path through Rainbow Six of Space. But an anti-tank are now moving in. Getting off a few good shots. And looks like the Panzers might actually be pulling out. Interestingly enough. And an assault going towards the centre. Coming to take things there. And let's go have a look at Helheim. What's he up to? He's got V1 rockets and all that, but no things that's really signifying he might be going for a King Tiger anytime soon. And another Kalipi Barrage flies through the air. And the sniper might not make it this time. No, the sniper again survives. No, wait, now the rifleman got him. He survived the Kalipi, but the rifleman, he could not. Grenadiers moving in. MG42 pulling away back to the bunker for reinforcement. Another bunker there, but apparently he's just using them as reinforcement points. Nothing else. Interestingly enough. Not a bad idea, I suppose, when you're defensive, actually. And engineer seizing the northern victory point. Panzer IV on the move, getting repaired. And the center might fall into American hands soon. The south in Germans. And we are finally seeing a supply yet for Rainbow Six. Nothing in the base of Jim. In fact, it's awfully quiet now after having quite a bit of action. I do believe it's time for the mid-game analysis. Yes, indeed. What is the current situation? Well, it's looking a bit haggard for the either side, I suppose, in some sense. Although the Germans did do too well a bit earlier. Now they're actually turning things around. The American base has quite taking quite a beating supply it up but there's no barracks there's no real and there apparently isn't an attempt to build a new one so if mr rainbow six actually loses some of his infantry he's not going to be able to replace it and mr jim on the other hand is just sticking to what he's not going for already has he's not really expanding any further there's no attempt at armor it seems although mr rainbow six could be of course it's a bit sad that both of them have gone for armor doctrine and lots of calibes no purchings that could have reached have been nice to see right here at this stage or perhaps some ranges if infantry or airborne if well airborne doctrine you know stuff like that but sadly that doesn't seem to be happening whereas for the germans we're seeing a nice sort of spread in doctrines and abilities that's nice to see and they're certainly holding on now with some Sturmgeschütz from Muspelheim apparently an officer has arrived question is will he actually be seeing any sort of frontline action or will he just be holding back time will tell time will tell but the Americans do need to press on and they do need to keep causing losses to the Germans and grinding them down Oh, there looks like a panther is now on the way. That's going to prove a bit of a problem for those calliopes if they get caught. But let's return to the fight. This is going to be a bit of a long match, I wager. Engineers retreating. Let us, well, speed this up a bit. And I... Engineers on the way, getting shot down on the retreat. Stuk. 
Panther and Flag Panzer moving in towards the south. And Titanic on hits the side of the Stug, but the Stug just keeps on going. Veterans are two for that as well, actually. And another Kalibi Barrage right on the German Panzers. They were spotted and now they're getting bombarded, but they're quick to move out. Although the motor might not quite have the same luck. Apparently it does. Black Panzer flanks the anti-tango. Panther and Stug engages the riflemen, suppressing them and killing them quite swiftly, forcing them away. And in the American base of Rainbow Six, we are in fact seeing a tank depot going up. This could prove useful. This could prove handy. Motor rounds flying through the air. Panzer checks hitting the chapel, but nothing else. Rifleman getting ready. No medic stations as of yet. And another Kalibi Barrage right there, hoping to catch a German infantry out of the open. Killing a few, but nothing else. Panzer Force ready to stop any Allied assault, and so is the Panther. Four kills already. German Steel. Getting hit by anti tank rounds. And the Panzer Force advance, knocking out the anti tank gun crew. Sticky bombs might be locked, though. Further anti tank guns firing. Armor piercing rounds, I hope. Sniper killing. Apparently the Germans are still getting snipers and the Panther gets an American sniper. That was a quite good shot right there. Nice shot, Schultz. And the anti-tank gun opens up on the Panther. Panther taking quite a bit of damage though. Armor piercing rounds being used. Armor piercing rounds in fact can do more damage than a King Tiger. And the anti-tank gun is no more. The rest of the German positions are getting bombarded again by Calibis and another mortar is no more. But the Americans are still lacking although they are now getting tank destroyers and Jim is getting more Calliopes. More tank destroyers. Apparently, we are going to see some sort of s tank destroyer wave being used against the Germans. Interestingly enough, no Panzers, to, no Germans to really keep up against the infantry. Just tank destroyers to clear up any armor. Most of them getting blown out a bit. Sticky bomb on the Stug 4, which is fighting against the riflemen. Damaged engine, destroyed engine. In fact, further riflemen moving in. Ostwin moving in. Riflemen suppressed. And slaughtered. Second Rifleman team holding to perhaps get off a sticky bomb. With Veterans 2 they in fact have increased range. So of course they might be able to get off one. But the Ostwind keeps stopping them. That naughty naughty Ostwind. And the Rifleman are simply getting murdered. Oh dear Rainbow Six lost the Rifleman team. Oh dear he should have retreated. And the German sniper getting hunted down. Shot in the face by an American sniper. And the tank destroyer so far not really managing anything. One going up against the Panzers. But the Panther moves in and this Wolverine needs to get away. Go Wolverines. And there we go. In fact, going away. Second one moves in. But they need to get behind the Panzers, not slug it out with them. Otherwise they're going to get lost quite swiftly. And a Kalibi Barrage apparently now going for the Allied War Machine. No idea why. Considering he's not sending them in. Panther and Panzer IV getting blown up. He needs and that oh dear, don't tell me he's sending them in now. About when it's probably about to get useless. Oh dear. And out of control. And that's one M10 which might get recuperated, but the other one will not be replaced. That was a bit of a waste. And another Calliope apparently he lost one. To the V1 rocket. Sneaky that. Apparently Jim lost one as well. That was a good V1 rocket actually. Didn't see that. And are probably our oppo American opponents didn't see that either. 91st Luftlander Division now with quite a bit more assets from the 2nd Panzer Division. Even some of the more valuable Panthers. Snipers moving about. And the M10s are on the prowl again. Germans trying to take back victory points in the north. Still plenty of Knights crossovers from Helheim. And the Knights cross are forced on the retreat. 
Whereas the Stru 4 is moving southwards to keep up the Americans. Sniper very close to getting hit by the Calliope and killed, but not quite. MG42 getting sniped. And tight tank on the nose been ready to protect the rear areas and the MG42 gets sniped again. Knights Cross holders now moving in, charging where the last known position of the Knights Cross Calliope is once more flying through the air. Enemy Pack 38 yeah. getting bombarded. German grenadiers killed on the retreat, but not fully annihilated. Casualties being reported. Central victory point secured by the Americans again, but now they're the ones with the low victory points. The Germans have managed to turn the tide against the Americans and the Stug 4 getting flanked by the M10s but the Pac-38 still heroically fires and support and this could actually end up badly for the M10s in fact one could get knocked out or will the Stug 4 get cleared out and main gun destroyed the Stug will not live for long Ostwin on the move towards the north hoping to stop these riflemen And another Calliope getting called in. There's quite a few Calliopes, but there's quite a lot of little ifs for Mr. Down. Jim. Only a few infantry units, in fact, an anti-tank gun, and then the Calliopes. The Calliopes are quite expensive, so if you keep losing them, it's going to get very, very hard for you to get anything else. And another M10 destroyed, but Allied War Machine is ready once more. And Calliope is flying through the air again. Another M10 out of control and lost, but of course replacements constantly getting ready. And further getting ready there, but he's going to really be seeing an M10 horde very soon. And the German Panzer simply getting blasted to bits. Yet they still survive. Muspelheim launching a force into the center. Kalib is once more going at the position of the Panzers. Killing a few troops and other bits, but not quite hitting the panzers. In fact, we're seeing veterans free for Helheim's armor. Grenadiers and false grenadiers charging towards the center rifle and stopping them. Kalibi is trying to get away from the panzer tricks. Grenades going off. I do believe it's time to look at Rainbow Six. His tank destroyer is now moving in with the vengeance. While the rest of the German infantry had secured the central victory point again for the fatherland for honor and glory and the panther blasts away interestingly enough we're not really seeing any Pershings have yet and again we're not seeing any Germans this is a bit tragic I mean we're not seeing any sort of attempt at heavy armor and no supply oh wait there we go supply and upgrades but nothing from here and still I mean they are bleeding quite a bit I really can't able to feel that lack of sort of a long term approach is really biting the Americans in the ass. And the anti tank gun, another one lost. The Germans just keep killing the crews. M10s on the move. Panthers and Panzer Force blasting away. And a flak 88. That's quite a bit of anti tank fire right here now. In fact, quite a bit of firepower in general. Flak 88, Panthers, Panzer Force, Flak Panzers. And the M10s just don't seem able to do anything. They're just getting wrecked again and again. An absolutely foolhardy charge by Mr. Rainbow Six. Although the Flak 88 is cleared out by the constant Calliope's. And apparently one Panther, in fact, goes down. Most tragic. Certainly, probably thanks to the help of the sticky bombs. Some M10s have been replaced, and the Panther actually gets immobilized. One more Calliope barrage, and a Panzer IV immobilized right in the middle of this. And what was what is this? A firestorm? Or is it a? Yes, this is a firestorm. Sticky bomb going off on the Panzer IV, and it's down heavy armored losses for Helheim. He sent in his armor without infantry support and Muspelheim wasn't able to keep it up with his own. Knights Cross also getting killed, my goodness. I mean, it really seems like Helm 
and has a bit of a problem keeping his troops alive for longer periods of time. And another Panther is lost. That's two Panthers, a Knights Cross Solar team, and a Panther for that's well close to 2,000 manpower he just lost in that engagement. My goodness, that's absolutely horrific. And the Perthing is getting prepared. Flag 88 ready once more to blast across the open. Well, what remains of the open plains of du Point Duhok. Ragnar charging across. Freshly trained, it seems. Grenade going off at the Grenadiers. And they are forced away. Pershing can be called in now if he wants to. But apparently he doesn't. But the Calliopes are still there to do terrible, terrible damage. And we see their rockets flying across. Like a lethal 4th of July. Hitting absolutely nothing this time around, it seems. Pack 38 and Flak 88 still there. German base getting bombarded by firestorms. A sniper hiding there with his the American base in sight. Sneaky that. And the M10s getting hit by Flak 88 fire and the Persian getting called into the field finally. About damn time, and now it is moving forwards. However, shall this go? I do not know. And another Clyde Barrage. Will there be anything to follow it up? Although it will be rather dependent on that flag idiot getting knocked out, otherwise, the American Army will be having a very brief tour into the central territory. Most victory points are in. Again in the hands of the American commanders, but they're having a bit of trouble holding it out. Again, they didn't sort of didn't really prepare their they did have medic stations, but in some cases they weren't quite well placed, and there were no supplied upgrades for Mr. Rainbow Six, and that's rather really binding him in the arse. He went heavily on infantry, but it didn't really support it. Besides the up usual upgrades, but there were no supplied upgrades. There wasn't in fact a supply yet upgrade at all. Knights Cross Soldiers forced away, the Pershing is too much. But the Germans do not give up in the south, and Pioneers are quickly moving in to secure that. And a defensive artillery barrage, heavy rockets just blasting everything, yet missing everything as well. And there we go, Calliope's once more flying through the air. Another barrage, another few Germans dead, or at least slightly crippled. And two snipers hanging about awfully close to each other, neither quite aware that the other is there. This is a bit silly. If anything, American counterattack in the South Falls Grenadiers with the 23 getting attacked by James Rifleman. Grenade going off. Falls Grenadiers forced away. Southern victory points again in the hands of Max Associates in the northern one. And let us go have a look at Muspelheim. What is his situation? He is going for the battle phase now. No more Stukes. The officer still hanging about in the base. Could have been helping on the front, even just seizing territory while then German infantry would cover him. I mean, he's quite a good harassment fellow, in particular again if supported even just briefly because he's again easily equalized things or even put, turn them into your advantage by forcing away the opponent's forces. And the flag eight blast, but so does the Calliope. Grenadiers caught out in the open in a rain of rockets and most of them die in fact. No wait, that wasn't a patent strike, that was a BAR. And Grenadiers in the north getting cut down. Pershing a bit afraid to move forwards due to the presence of the Flag 88 and a fresh Panzer have arrived having suffered quite some losses. Helheim is finally able to recuperate the losses suffered. Sniper still hanging about here. Kalibi is just continuing to blasting away continually, monotonally. Pershing on the way towards the north. Another Ostman ready. Panther goes up against the Pershing. And the Panther gets penetrated on the first shot. The Panther on the other hand, and we got a troll penetrating the frontal armor of the Pershing. And the Pershing misses, my goodness. Knight's Cross with support from the Usman just charges in. Grenade on the Knight's Cross, doing quite a bit of damage, even killing one. But the Knight's Cross are what they are. Tough German infantry, they are the best. Fully equipped with assault rivals. And the Panther getting forced away. The M10 and the Pershing simply too much, and the Flag 88 cannot cover here, although those Panzer, those Grenadiers with Panzer X might be able to turn things around. Yeah. 
And battle phase has been reached for our friend Muspelheim. And once more Muspelheim's base is getting wrecked. Once more they are going for the important targets. In this case, the Panzer Command. And another barrage. In fact, the Flag 88 this time does not survive. Once more the crew is dead. Which of course could open up for an assault towards the center if there were anyone actually able to do so. The Panzer Command is no more. Knights cross between past all of that, getting killed. The Amar Court is now getting knocked out as well. Panzer IV and Sturmgeschütz IV moving towards the north to deal with this threat. Panther getting repaired, quite in dire need of them. And the Grenadier is getting slaughtered as well. The Pershing is too much, but now the Pershing actually needs to get away. And he's not retreating either. Well, that's just one. He apparently doesn't want to keep it. He's just going for the Allied war machine and just hoping to get it quickly replaced. But then the Germans actually ignore it. Good move there. In fact, we spot a Calliope. Panther 4 needs to get away. Panther on the move to save the day. And the Pershing needs to get away for repairs. Quickly. Oh dear. And a King Tiger has arrived, Koenig's Tiger. Engine is destroyed, and just in that moment, as I suspected, it ends, and now he won't be able to get it back. In fact, he's just lost a person he probably could have saved. And the King Tiger saves the day, although that Panther might not make it to see another one. In fact, there we go. Blown to bits, the Calliope rocket through the side. And another tank destroyed, blown to bits. The Americans are really getting blown to bits now. Everything has failed. They simply cannot muster any further forces. But why going down here in the south it seems? Bit of a curious thing to see at this stage. And the American forces are looking rather battered. Not much left. Knight's Cross getting cut down once more. I mean, he doesn't really seem to be getting the most out of his Knight's Cross holders, to be frank. He's just losing them in large numbers. And he's never really killing much. He might want to work on his use of actual cover and, of course, his tactics for the infantry. M10 right in front of the King Tiger, that's not really what you want at any stage. And register artillery going in to protect some point. The enemy has 50 points left. Right here, stopping to rifle, in fact, slaughtering them brutally. Oh dear. And some other rifle being stopped right out in the front by the Ostwind, which just keeps blasting away. And looks like it's a last ditch effort in the north. King Tiger fending off against the remains of the Americans as they launch one desperate last assault to secure that northern victory point. We find them enough time to secure the rest. M10s going off against the King Tiger. The King Tiger having actual trouble spotting them, of course. There's two targets. But a pack 38 saves the day, knocking out both M10s. A building collapses under the ruthless barrage of the Calliopes. But the King Tiger is still there, illuminated, illuminating the fires of the American tanks, or tank destroyers. It blasts away, crushes them, and advances. Another Calliope barrage illuminating the sky. And the Knights Cross Holders moving to secure that victory point. And a GG from Rainbow Six, a GG from Helmheim. GG all around. We have lost it. Well played, all that. Nice to see, nice and polite. A bit of finding in the center, but the American effort has been broken. The 4th Infantry Division lost against the 91st Luftlander and its allies of the 2nd Panzer Division. So there we go. Quite a fight, quite a tournament fight in a 
point to hoc setting, two versus two. Of course, what can we learn from this? I mean, we saw a lot of interesting things. We saw some good aggression from the Americans in the start. We saw lots of rifles. We saw BARs. We saw grenades. But then things sort of halted. There was the sort of forward backs, but that didn't never really came greatly into play. It sort of ended more being a, a, a problem. There was the medic station, but they weren't quite there for the one that needed them. And so there was a lack of m supply yards as well for that player who had all the riflemen. He didn't have one. He needed would really have needed all those supply and upgrades, so really kept the upkeep as slow as possible so we could get enough manpower, but instead he was slowly choking himself in the process. That's not really good, and of course that probably bit him in the ass, and then of course he lost the barracks in a vicious attack, and then he sort of shifted away from using rifle and just spamming M10s, which didn't really help him either. Constantly, though, the gems were able to basically hold on. I mean, Muspelheim with his medic bunker really kept things going and allowed Helheim to really recover. The M8 was a nice move, so was the mortar, but something was just lacking. It was sort of that thing to really keep them going in the longer run. There was the supply and upgrades. There was some medic stations, but never quite managed enough out of them, I feel. And then, of course, there was the heavy spam of Calibis. I mean, one player with it is alright, but you don't need both. And really, one of them ought to have gone pushing much earlier. Instead, we saw lots of Calibis, thus neglecting every other arm that is infantry support and all that. That didn't quite work out either, whereas we saw some good separate doctrines from the German players who kept some infantry and of course kept attacking. Even with the Panzer command he just went for Knight's Cross holders, although he needs to work a bit on keeping those alive. He just charged them across and lost them repeatedly in several slightly helpful in situations. And of course Panthers, Panzer, Panzer Force, Panthers did alright. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, wind up, subscribe, tell your friends. And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.